Welcome back. So, so far we've been looking at interest rates that are the same rate for every period of time, whether that be years or months, the interest rate is the same for each of those periods. But there are going to be scenarios where the interest rate over a certain period of time is going to be different for different periods of time. For example, it might be different every year. And in these cases, an average rate over this time might be of interest to us. And so we would call this average rate the average annual rate of return. And it's actually fairly simple in concept, and so it's gonna be best demonstrated with an example. And that has to deal with this chart that we have right here. So in practice, a good real world example of this idea of an average annual rate of return would be to look at annual return rates for a particular stock. So while we could do this for a bank account that has a different interest rate every year, we'll be looking at a more practical example, such as the stock rates for the Apple stock over the years from 2012 to 2016. And I'll include the source where I got these numbers from in the description of this video, if you're interested in seeing that. So what we're going to try to do here is to take these five years and find an average rate over these five years. And so we have a bit of a process that we use to go through with that. And so the process looks something like this. We're going to take each rate from this bottom row here for each year and we're going to use them to find an average rate. And so we'll start with 2012 and what we're going to do is we'll take one plus the rate from 2012 which in this case was 32.24 percent and we'll put that in decimal format so that would be 0.3224 and then we're going to close that quantity and we're going to multiply it times one plus the 2013 rate. And then we'll multiply that by the rate in 2014 plus one and we'll go all the way until we get to 2016. So let's do that. We'll have one plus 0 0.0807. That would be this rate in decimal form. Then we'll have one plus 0 0.4062. And then our next one's gonna be a little tricky because 2015 is a negative rate. And so we treat this one the same as the others, but just remember that it is a negative rate. So we're gonna have one plus negative 0 0.0301, and that will be multiplied by one plus 0.1248, which is this rate right here in decimal form. So then if we were to simplify each quantity, so we add each rate to one, we would then find this. 1.3224 times 1.0807 times 1.4062. And then this one's a little bit different. We're gonna have times 0 0.9699 and then times 1.1248. Then if we were to multiply all of these together, they would equal 2.1924. And this number right here represents the value of an investment in 2016 that started in 2012. So for example, let's say that we had an investment of $100 in this stock and we bought it in 2012. At the end of 2016, if we multiplied that 100 by this rate, we would see how much our investment is worth at the end of 2016. However, we are not interested in knowing that per se, we wanna know what is the average rate over this period of time. And so while this may be nice to know in some circumstances, this is not the average annual rate of return. We're going to use this to help find it. All right, so I rearranged our work a little bit, and now what we're going to do is we're going to use this value we found to find the average annual rate of return. And the way we do this is we set this value of the investment equal to an expression that would represent the rate over that five-year period from 2012 to 2016, right? Because we have one, two, three, four, five years. So what I'll do is I'll write 2.1924, which just comes from right here, and I'm gonna set it equal to one plus the interest rate or the average annual rate of return that I'm interested in and put that to the power for the number of periods I'm interested in, which in this case is a five year period. And so to the fifth power. And so this should make sense because if you imagine previously, if we were looking at an account that had an interest rate of let's say 5%, right? Then that means that we would be taking 1.05, times 1.05 and keep doing that for however many years we are interested in and then that's what we would multiply by our investment. That's the whole idea of the future value equals the deposit times one plus the interest rate 
to our number of periods. Every time we have another period or we increase our n, the amount of these quantities we're multiplying increases. And so it would be the same value before. But if we're looking at different rates like we are here, then this is what it would look like instead of this, right? We don't have the same rate every period. So that's why it makes sense to set this equal to this format because then this is going to give us that average rate that would be used every year rather than the different rates in each year. So let's solve for that value of i. And the first thing I'll do is we'll take the fifth root of each side of the equation. So that's gonna leave us with 2.1924 to the one fifth power, and that's gonna be equal to one plus i. And then if I put this side into the calculator, I'm going to get 1.16999, and there's some more decimals there, but I rounded, and this would be equal to one plus i. And then we can subtract our one over to this side, and we'll find that i is going to be equal to 0.16999. And so this, and we could also write this as 16.99%, this is our average annual rate of return. Over this five year period, the average percentage that we were earning is 16.99% or about 17%. And so that took each one of these rates into account through this process so then real quick, so that we can nail this concept down, I wanna make sure that it makes sense. This average annual rate of return will give us this same amount that multiplying each of these different rates gave us for that five year period. So if I were to have one plus that 0.16999, that average annual rate of return that we found, and I were to multiply that by itself five times, which I'm going to get this same amount, and I wanna show you that. All right, so now if we plug this in our calculator, and I encourage you to do it as well, it's still going to be equal to that 2.1924, right? And that is exactly what we were doing when we set this amount up here equal to that one plus i to the fifth power. We're trying to find what rate, if it was the same for five years, would give us this same amount over that period of time. So hopefully you plug this into the calculator for yourself and see that it's true, that when we set this equal to this, we did find the average rate for that time period. Hopefully that makes sense. So now that we know the process of finding the average annual rate of return, we can use it to do some other examples. All right, so here we have an example that Bill deposits money into an account that has a yearly compound interest rate of 1% in one year 0.5% in year two, and 1.25% in year three. What is Bill's average annual interest rate for that three year period? So first, let's write down each one of his interest rates. So in year one, he had a 1% interest rate, which is going to equal 0 0.01. Then in year two, he had a 0.5% interest rate. So write that and that's equal to 0 0.005. And then in year three, he had a 1.25% interest rate. So we'll have 1.25%, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.0125. So here we have our three interest rates, and we can use them to find an average interest rate over that three year period. So what we'll do is we'll say that we want to learn the average interest rate over that three year period, and we're gonna set it equal to one plus each of these interest rates individually, just like this. So all that we did was we took the interest rate for year one and we added it to one, and then we have this quantity multiplied one plus the interest rate for year two times one plus the interest rate for year three. And so then we can simplify this. So I'm going to write one plus i to the third power is equal to 1.01 times 1.005 times 1.0125. And then if we were to multiply all these together in a calculator, we would have one plus i to the third power is equal to 1.0277381, and then we have more decimals after that. So then if I finish this, I'm gonna continue this up here, we would have one plus i is equal to that value 1.0277 and so on, to the one third power, right? Because we have one plus i to the third power, if we take the cubed root of both sides, then we'll be left with this. Because the cube root of a number is the same as 
saying it's to the one third power, in case that was a little confusing. So then we have one plus i is equal to 1.009618, and then we can subtract one from each side, and then we will find that i is equal to 0 0.009618. And that would be our average annual rate for that three year period. And we could also write this, by the way, as 0.91618%. That would be the same thing. So hopefully that process makes sense. It's not too difficult. The main idea is that you have different interest rates for different periods of time, and you set them equal to a rate you're interested in that would give the same result at the end of a certain amount of periods, but if it was the same rate every year rather than being a different rate. All right, so hopefully that does make sense. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. But that is all I have for this lesson. I'll have some more examples you can click on at the end of this video, and there will also be a link for that in the description. But until then, I'll see you next time.